Some of what you just described, the need to move money from place to place, the cost of doing so, the overhead, as you put it, makes me think, believe it or not, of Bitcoin, because some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. The customers we're talking about aren't trying to be anonymous. You know, they're willing to be uh, known. So it, it, the Bitcoin technology is key, and you could add to it or you could build a similar technology uh, where there's enough attribution that people feel comfortable. This has nothing to do with uh, terrorism or uh, any type of, of money laundering. Question. Jamie Dimon said it last week. Is Bitcoin a fraud? Um, there are two things that are required for a currency. You know, um, the first is that you can make transactions in it. It's a medium of exchange. And the second thing is that it's a storehold of wealth. Those are, should be the two purposes of a currency. Bitcoin today, you really can't make much transactions in it. I got Bitcoin. I want to go through the experience of spending it. It's not easy. You can't spend it very easily. Right. And in terms of a storehold of wealth, it's not an effective storehold of wealth because it's, um, it has volatility to it, unlike gold, let's say, in which reflects the value of money. Right. It's more stable than the value of money. Bitcoin is a highly speculative market. We have these criteria for determining what a bubble is. In other words, we take these criteria. I won't get into them because it'll probably take too long. But on these criteria. And we just define a bubble based on those criteria. <clears throat> Bitcoin is a bubble. Okay? Bitco Bitcoin is a bubble. It's a shame. It could be a currency. It, it could work. I mean, c conceptually. But the amount of speculation that is going on and the lack of uh, transaction um, the idea that um, it, it'll be private in terms right. of transaction. In terms of the, gov the government allowing it to be a private currency. Uh, right. In other words, all oh, people won't know what you're doing and right. will it be a private currency is really questionable in terms of if you look at what's being gone on in terms of governments to examine it and so on and so forth. And then when you take Bitcoin, Bitcoin, there are other cryptocurrencies. So Bitcoin might have a lose competition to another cryptocurrency. Right. And, and, and so is it a cryptocurrency bet that we're making or is a Bitcoin get bet? It's very much speculative people thinking, can I sell it at a higher price? And so it's a bubble. Uh, first of all, I would like to know a little bit more of your background. So as many Bitcoin supporters, um, you have a past as a, a skeptic. So how did you transition from being a Bitcoin skeptic to a Bitcoin believer? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's actually really interesting in that uh, had I been less skeptical, I'd be a lot wealthier, but uh, that's OK. Um, so look, I. My, my history goes, goes way back. You know, I came out of school, business school, went to work for an insurance company, managed bonds and worked for an equity firm. Then I kind of went back to my alma mater, worked in the endowment world. And, and the endowment model really taught me all about investing in private investments, particularly venture capital. And I had this aha moment in 1996. We invested a little bit of money in this little company called Google. Uh, half a million dollars turned into 200 million. I, there sh I joke there should be a quad at Notre Dame called the Google Quad. And essentially what that did is it made me realize that infrastructure around these, these technological innovation waves really matter. So fast forward to 2013, uh, I had invested with a friend, Dan Moorhead, uh, in his macro fund when he spun out a tiger. And he called me up and said, hey, come to San Francisco. I want to tell you about what I'm going to do and went out there and he said, look, I'm going to shut down my hedge fund and I'm going to spend the rest of my career focused on Bitcoin and blockchain. And I like, look, I wasn't running drugs on Silk Road. I was not a cryptography student. I, I didn't know what Bitcoin was in 2013. Unfortunately, I joke, you know, the, um, the Winklevoss twins and I were introduced to Bitcoin about the exact same time. They're multi-billionaires. I'm not. Hmm, so be it. Uh, now, I also defend myself saying I didn't have half a billion dollars to put into it, but I had something, but I, but I didn't do it. Because even though Dan had conviction about it, I, I was skeptical. I didn't, I didn't really understand. Now, what I did understand was infrastructure. So investing in his early funds 
has been great. Those funds are up 11, 12 X. Uh, I think now more with, with the FTX deal, but that pales in comparison to the Bitcoin fund, which is up 350 times best performing hedge fund in the history of hedge funds. So uh, the, the short version of a very long tale, a lot of people have heard it already is about nine months later, I wrote one paragraph in a letter to investors, 40 pages, one paragraph saying Bitcoin might be an interesting special situation. You know, maybe throw a few basis points in, price was 500 bucks. I got hate. Giovanni, I got hate from my clients. I mean, like, we'll fire you. Don't talk about this stupid stuff. Go back to doing your job. Like, wow. I mean, that is a violent reaction. So now what's interesting about that, the skepticism was quote unquote proven right in that the price fell over the next few months. The price went from 500 bucks all the way down to 185 bucks. And of course I said, oh, see, Everyone was right. No, well, no, they weren't. Right? Price is a liar. Stole that from John Burbank. And the value kept decreasing. The value kept going up. So that was 2015. 2016, I finally got over the skepticism. Why? Because I did the work. I actually spent a year diving deeply into the technology, reading the white papers, really looking and talking to, to other people. And, and I had this aha moment. I mean, I couldn't make this up. I was literally behind the wheel of an RV in Eureka, California. And it hit me that this is simply an operating system. The blockchain technology is an operating system for the internet of value. And the internet of value will be bigger than the internet, will be bigger than the mobile net. And Bitcoin and other things are going to power that. Other cryptocurrencies are going to power that. And so finally convinced some clients to go in 2017, finally took the really full plunge and formed Morgan Creek Digital, a subsidiary of Morgan Creek Capital. And over those last four years, I went from spending, you know, five, 10 percent of my time on this to now close to 100 percent of my time. Yeah. And actually, now I would like to talk about the, the value, the actual um, exponential increase in value that this technology can spark. So as, as far as I remember, one of your most famous price prediction for Bitcoin was $250,000 uh, within the next uh, five years. So can you maybe explain us uh, how do you think that Bitcoin is going to reach that value within this time frame? Yep. So that actually is, is kind of a, uh, a pairing back of my original comment, which was uh, Bitcoin gold equivalents. So if I believe that Bitcoin is digital gold, which I do, digital money, then gold's total market cap is about 8 trillion. 8 trillion divided by the number of Bitcoin gives you a price of around $500,000 a coin. But a couple months ago, I guess nine months ago or so, someone asked me the question. I said, well, they said, what's the short term view? I said, well, if you think about it, all the gold really doesn't make sense because about half the gold is jewelry and chalices and stuff that doesn't get really traded very often. The monetary value of gold is about $4 trillion. That's for sure where Bitcoin's going. I mean, there, there's no doubt in my mind that we're going there. And that's about a 10-bagger from here. So at, you know, uh, or actually it was a 10-bagger from back then. So uh, about a 5-bagger from here. So um, that is, uh, you know, from 50,000 right around to 250,000. And I said about a three to a five year period. And the challenge is the price has euphoria and fear. And so you have the, the line of value and the price goes up and down above and below it. And so how quickly we get to that price, like there are a whole bunch of people this year. Like if you looked at the, the core model, it basically said the value of the network around now would be around $100,000 question for the, it's a little bit off topic, but it's in the news or it's becoming more in the news. Uh, so it's about crypto, crypto assets, crypto, uh, you know. Uh, uh -huh. Crypto, uh, seriously? Chris, seriously, seriously, very seriously. I think you and Jack Dorsey have chatted a bit uh, recently about this, right? Bitcoin and Ethereum scammers were so rampant on, on uh, Twitter that I, I said I'd just join in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
that's, that's, that's said like one point one buy some Bitcoin. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and then I got <laughs> my account got suspended because <laughs> oh, no. they obviously had like some automatic rule that would, if you try to sell Bitcoin oh, or no. something. <laughs> but I was just joking. Uh, yeah. 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 So my, my, my question is a little it's a it's a little different from cryptocurrencies. Although given your history in the payments ecosystem, it would be very interesting to know if you agree with Jack and there is going to be one name. Of, uh, cryptocurrency when it comes to the internet. He thinks it's Bitcoin. It's, it's interesting. I have some friends of mine that are kind of really involved in crypto. I mean, I think like the Bitcoin structure was quite brilliant. Yeah, it seems like there's some merit to Ethereum as well and, and maybe some of the others. But, you know, I'm not sure. It's like, I'm not sure that it would be a good use of Tesla resources to get involved in crypto. I mean, we're really just trying to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. And I mean, I think actually one of the downsides of crypto is that it, computationally, it's like quite energy intensive. So like there had to be some kind of constraint on the creation of crypto. So, but it's very energy intensive to create like the incremental Bitcoin at this point. Yeah. But at the, at same, by the same time, there were $1.3 trillion worth of transactions in Bitcoin. And we don't see it here because it's not for pizza or Coke. It, it's business uh-huh. to business Might in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we think yeah. it is business to business in Africa where it is prohibitively expensive to convert from one nation's currency to another. You have to go through the dollar. And the, I mean, it really is very important to it's money over IP for them. It's free yeah. transmission of money. And that's yeah. really important to opening up the world. And, you know, it, you know, yeah. it bypasses currency controls. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's well, and uh, if, yeah, it, I, paper money is going away. Yes. Um, and crypto is a far better way to transfer value than, than pieces of paper. That's for sure. Without a doubt. That has its pros and cons. Just to clarify, Tesla's not going to start selling Bitcoin anytime no, soon. <laughs> okay, you heard no, it no. here first, even though everyone thought that. No. <laughs> well, I've, I've actually been reading a lot about it, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to diversify my investment portfolio. Uh, my question is, what is Dogecoin? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. It's a good question. Well, it's the future of currency. It's an unstoppable financial vehicle that's going to take over the world. I get that, but uh, what is it, man? <laughs> I keep telling you, it's a cryptocurrency you can trade for conventional money. Oh, so it's a hustle. Yeah, it's a hustle. <laughs> Why didn't you say that, man? Both father, everybody. It's a hustle. To the moon. 